for them at the time. And they knew in their gut that this guy was different. That's why they surprised everybody. They shocked the world in November of 2016 and put him in office and remained that loyal to him ever since. Is he a perfect man? No. Was he a perfect president? No. Is he guilty of rhetoric that can be controversial? Of course. We, we know these things about President Trump. But he's a special man. Hey, welcome back to Courageous Media. Thanks so much for joining me. One of the topics that is trending all over social media is Megyn Kelly. I'm going to play two clips. Uh, we're going to dive into one. One we're just going to show for some context. We're going to dive in to Megyn Kelly's live address right after the assassination attempt. And it is phenomenal. Megyn Kelly is all over social media and you have got to see this. But I want to play a little context first. Remember this from several years ago. Involving yours truly and presidential contender Donald Trump. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account... Only Rosie so O'Donnell. The fact is she asked me a very inappropriate question. She asked, she should really be apologizing to me. You want to know the truth. You can see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever. I said, you know, how much of this do you take? I have zero respect for Megyn Kelly. I don't think she's very good at what she does. I think she's highly overrated. Trump, who is the front runner, will not apologize. And I certainly will not apologize for doing good journalism. Firing off a series of negative late night tweets about Fox News anchor and Republican debate co-moderator Megyn Kelly, retweeting a comment calling her a bimbo. On Tuesday, Fox News Chairman Roger Ailes demanding an apology from Trump. It's a very small element in my life, Megyn Kelly. I don't care about Megyn Kelly, but no, I would not apologize. She should probably apologize to me, but I just don't care. But Fox News has had enough, pulling the interview after Trump ridiculed its political coverage and its anchor, Megyn Kelly, yet again, calling Kelly a lightweight on Twitter Tuesday. Bizarre, because I became the story. Uh, he was so very focused on me that I became the story. And, you know, you never want to be the story when you're a news person. You want to be covering the story. So it was truly like an Alice through the looking glass experience. The showdown that didn't happen. Trump and co-moderator Megyn Kelly remaining civil after their epic battle at the first debate. Mr. Trump. Hi. Hello. How you doing? Nice to be with you, Megyn. Great to have you nice here. You. You're looking well. You're looking As well. are you. If. So we all remember the Megyn Kelly feud. Megyn Kelly... May not have been all in as a never Trumper, but Megyn Kelly was certainly not in for Trump at all. Uh, she did ask him very hard, even borderline inappropriate questions way back then because Megyn Kelly was not a Trump fan. She made it abundantly clear that she was voting for other people, that she was not going to vote for Trump. But now on the, on the eve of you know, following the shooting, Everything has changed. Megyn Kelly has flipped because she sees something in Trump that I think the rest of America and the rest of the world sees. You have got to watch this. This is amazing. Thinking about President Trump, 78 years old, independently wealthy, though they're trying to stop that too, as I pointed out. And he's been through the ringer, my God, before tonight, he's been through the ringer for this country over the past eight, nine years. You know, he was the host of the number one television program in America. The Apprentice was crushing it. And he was the reason. As soon as they tried to use another host, it went down the tubes. He could have just stayed doing that. He was beloved, he wasn't as controversial. He didn't have to get into politics, but he did. And he stayed in politics. He's been president, why would he run again? Just, right, like, who would do such a thing? Just go back to your private life and your beautiful wife and your children, your grandchildren, and your golf courses. Why put yourself through this? Why continue engaging with these people who hate you and want to destroy you and you know it? So true. People tend to forget Donald Trump was universally loved as the Apprentice host. Donald Trump was a multi-billionaire. Donald Trump had a worldwide construction real estate organization. Donald Trump had it made. He didn't need to do any of this. When he, went, when he entered into 2016, he turned all the tables and got elected. And he, and he absolutely turned the country around from the Obama years and saved it from Hillary Clinton. Then, when the entire election debacle happened in 2020, which was complete and total election fraud, 
He had the chance again to simply walk away. A multi-billionaire, Uber, I mean, very profitable, uh, uh, very, very much beloved on his side of the fence. And I guarantee you, he was told by the powers that be that if that we will come after you if you run. I guarantee you that all of the lawfare against him would have stopped immediately if he withdrew from the race and he, the, he was told that. Yet he entered back in because he loves America and because he loves the working people of America. He is the elite that hates elites, which is amazing. Ah, Megyn Kelly hits this nail on the head. That was the final question of my interview with Trump in September. And here's what he said. You could be going into your 78th year enjoying this beautiful golf course. Yeah. Mar-a-Lago, your lovely family. No. Um, you don't have to be running for president, sitting for four criminal trials, some civil, and possibly looking at jail time. No. Is it worth it? Yeah. Uh, make America great again. Our country's going to hell. Our country's going down. You don't realize it. I don't believe you realize it. But our country's going down. Our country... And I used to say we're going to end up being, if we don't do certain things, we're going to end up being Venezuela on steroids. How about, how about we're buying oil now from Venezuela? How about that? We're making Venezuela rich. Okay, think of it. The people running Venezuela, which were total enemies, what we're doing is so crazy. We're not using our oil. We're making Venezuela rich. But the country... I believe has one last chance, and that's this. This is the most important election we've ever had. Mm. I believe Donald Trump genuinely loves his country. Yes, he does. Not just himself, as his detractors say. I believe that's why he is running again, despite all of it, all the things that have happened to him. He doesn't deserve what the left has done to him, and he certainly didn't deserve what happened to him today. And the people who love him who saw the- She's absolutely right. Nobody, you don't run for president in the position that you're in, where you're already wealthy, already popular, already powerful, unless you love the country. Because the slings and arrows that Donald Trump has to take on a day-to-day -day basis just to be in the fight for president are more than 90% of the country could ever take. Such a- clear statement on that from Megyn Kelly. This is awesome. Magic in his message, in his persona, and responded to the way he made them feel, which was seen and heard for the first time in decades. Someone who, though he had become of the elites, rejected elitism and said to the men and women of Appalachia, I get, I get it. I see you. I see what happened to your manufacturing jobs and I'll fight for you. I'll stand up to China. I'm not gonna lean into the free trade thing. I'm gonna talk about possible tariffs. I'm gonna do some radical things that President Biden would wind up continuing, though he mm -hmm. criticized Trump mightily for them at the time. And they knew in their gut that this guy was different. That's why they surprised everybody. They shocked the world in November of 2016 and put him in office and remained that loyal to him ever since. Is he a perfect man? No. Was he a perfect president? No. Is he guilty of rhetoric that can be controversial? Of course, we, we know these things about President Trump. But he stands for the little guy. He is the one politician that I remember in my lifetime, basically other than Reagan, that stood for the little guy, for the working man, for the union guy, for the small business person, for the guy who just had a job and was making ends meet. He's the one who stood for them for bringing back manufacturing jobs, for bringing back service jobs that had been outsourced to India and the Philippines, customer service centers, call centers. He put in place policies and incentives to bring all of those jobs back to the United States and to bring trillions of dollars of, of homegrown capital back to the United States who had been chased away by confiscatory taxes and ridiculous regulations. Donald Trump knew how to run this economy, and he did it for the little guy, not for the elitists. All the Democrats and all the leftist fools out there would tell you that Donald Trump's all his tax cuts for the rich. No, they weren't. Look at the fact that every single tax bracket went down with Donald Trump's tax cut. 
Yeah, the rich tax bracket went down. So did the one below that and the one below that. And the one every single tax rate went down. It was a tax cut for everyone. And the the impact was far more for those on the lower side of the income bracket because those two or three points were far more meaningful than the two or three points for somebody who's already making a million dollars a year. Donald Trump is for the little guy. She is so right on this. But he's a special man. He is. There's, there's not a lot of guys like this, not a lot of human beings like this with that kind of strength and resilience and ability literally under fire to stand up and say, fight. It was inspirational. I believe President Trump is going to win in November. I previously disclosed he will have my vote. And I am now one of the people who will walk over broken glass to make sure I cast my vote. And I know I won't be alone. I wow. Wow, did you catch that? This is the Megyn Kelly who was almost a never Trumper just a few years ago. I will walk across broken glass to make sure that Trump has my vote. Realize that that is the kind of loyalty that Trump inspires in people. He doesn't demand it. He doesn't ask for it. It's the kind of loyalty that he inspires because of his actions and because of what he does. And it's also why he inspires such hatred from the left, because they hate the fact that he is going to upset their establishment, globalist, woke nonsense, apple cart. And they know that he can do it. And they're growing increasingly violent and rhetorical because they see him winning. This is just amazing. I want to play that again because that almost brings me to tears. President Trump is going to win in November. I previously disclosed he will have my vote. And I am now one of the people who will walk over broken glass to make sure I cast my vote. Wow. And I know I won't be alone. I think now you are going to see formerly blue states rush to pull the lever for Donald Trump. I thought it was bad before tonight. And I just, I think my fellow Americans will understand how important it is to send a message loud and clear to the people who want to change our country, that we won't allow it, that we are not going to lose sight of one another. We're not going to continue trying to ruin each other, end each other. That's not how we want to live. No. That we will find our way back to one another. Tens of thousands of people showed up tonight in Butler, Pennsylvania to show their support for a presidential candidate and some maybe just to listen to him. The kids don't know. They just wanted to see the former president. That's a uniquely American thing, the way we do things in this country. And he's such a character. Maybe they just wanted to go for the fun or because they wanted to hear what he had to say the way I do with my kids. Or I say, listen to this speech. What do you think? Let's get a glimpse of him. What did you hear? What's your reaction? They showed up and they ran for their lives instead in Butler, Pennsylvania. And after Mr. Trump was- But Trump didn't run for his life. Trump stood tall after taking a bullet and shook his fist in defiance at the leftist tyrannical fools who would do anything to keep him out of office. They started with- election fraud. Then they went to uh, trying to keep him off the ballot with that type of lawfare. Then they went to indictments. Then they went to a mugshot. Then they went to actual trials that were all completely fabricated and ridiculous. Then they actually got a sham conviction in New York. And at every single turn, Trump rose higher and higher and higher. His poll numbers got better. His support got stronger. It got more galvanized. It got more unified. Everything they have thrown at Trump, every attack they have tried, they have fled seven ways. In the words of Psalms, Trump is amazing. Was removed in the beast. And two of his most ardent fans were shot dead or within an inch of their life. 
the American flag still waved. The remnants at the site, bottles and so on, scattered the ground. And yet much like 9-11, after it was all over, the American flag still waved over a now empty area. That's what it's all about. Our flag was still there. We're still there. We're still with each other. I just said this on July 4th. We are so lucky to have been born in this country. We hit the lottery. That's right. Our patriotism must be reignited for America. And yes, our understanding that there's humanity on both sides. The hard partisan loons who have been behind the rhetoric we've discussed tonight do not represent either side. And there is room for a reconnection. But I'll tell you what, President Trump needs to win this election. Period. Absolutely. President Trump needs to win this election. It's not about him anymore. It's about us. It's about America. And so I hope you'll vote and I hope you'll vote Republican. And I hope you'll say a prayer for President Trump and his family and indeed for President Biden and our elected leaders. Wow, what an amazing address. And she's so right on so many counts. It's time that we get back to what we have in common. A, we are all human beings. We all bleed red. It doesn't matter what color you are, what ethnicity you are, what your background is. We all bleed red. And as Americans, we should all have a love for the true government of our country, which is not whoever holds office at the current time. The highest law in our land is the Constitution. And it's time that we come together as Americans and support and defend that Constitution and utterly ridicule, lambast, prosecute and kick out of our midst those who would shred our constitution because it is the constitution that holds this republic together by the grace of God. And we need to support and defend that constitution as it is written. Stop nibbling around the edges. Stop trying to shred it as many leftists have tried to do. I'm not going to name any names in this, in this podcast. We'll talk about that later. She's absolutely right. We need to get back to that because the flag still waved over that empty fairgrounds where a knucklehead, an evil knucklehead, inspired by other evil knuckleheads in the propaganda media and in elements of the current administration, tried to take a shot at former President Trump. Thank God he did not succeed by the divine providence of God. And so now, as she said, We need to come together and we need to vote. We need to vote Republican because this is the most important election in our lifetime. This election will determine the course of America for the next several decades. Whether we go down the tyrannical road with the leftists who want to shred the Constitution and put their political rivals in prison and or worse, or we go down the road where the Constitution is held high, where citizens are put before anybody else where America is put, is, is put forward before any other country on the planet, where we get our house in order and then out of our abundance, we help others. When we get our house in order and then out of our abundance, we invite immigrants in, in legally. Those are the kitchen table issues. God is good and he is sovereign. Hey, I would love to know what you think. I was absolutely floored when I saw Megan Kelly's address. I knew I had to do a video on it so that the rest, so the world that hasn't seen this can absolutely see the fact that somebody who was very much not for Trump has flipped 100% all in. I will walk across broken glass for Trump. That is amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Please smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the notifications. Share this with everybody you know. If you want to support us more deeply, please join us on YouTube or Locals. And you could also become part of our core team. Just grab those notifications. Whenever we drop something, watch it, like it, comment on it, and please share it on all your socials. Remember, God is good and he is sovereign. As Megyn Kelly said, we all need to vote. We all need to vote Republican. We need to make sure 
that it is too big to rig that Donald Trump wins this election. November 5, November 5 is D-Day, folks. Let's do it. It'll all be good in the end. Hey, if it's not yet good, it's not yet the end. Till I catch you next time. Love you so much, Courageous Family. Thank you.